Hello everyone. One of the important factors that would make testing IoT applications different from traditional web applications is its communication protocol. I am Balaji Ponnada and I am here to talk about testing MQTT based IoT applications. In this short talk, I'll be talking about a specific IoT communication protocol called MQTT and its difference from the traditional web protocol HTTP. How does MQTT work and testing MQTT based applications? Now, the important part of Internet of Things is the thing. Now, what's a thing? A thing is anything that has the ability to sense data, which means it has a sensor and it has an identity. You call it IP address or MAC address, and it has the ability to communicate the data over the network. Now, this is obviously beyond computers. Let's talk about an example. Imagine a long distance traveling train and a thing associated with it, which will send data of its geolocation for every 10 seconds. Now, there could be lots of use cases on how the data could be consumed. Now, if the data from this thing has to be communicated to the destination, which could be a server or something else, there are a few requirements. So the first requirement is obviously it should work in unstable networks because the train travels from one distance to other distance. There is no guarantee that there will be continuity in network. The second requirement will be to consume less power. The thing may or may not have a continuous power source and hence the data transfer should happen over less power consumption. And the third one is the data that is transferred is lightweight. It need not transfer uh, pages of documents or images. It's just a binary data geolocation in this case. Now, obviously, HTTP protocol will not meet these requirements. As, a, as it is built on top of a request response model, which means for the data to be transferred between client and server, a handshake process need to be established due to which the high power consumption happens to establish this connection and keep the connection alive. And HTTP protocol is built for document centric data transfer, which means you can, you can transfer huge data and obviously the message size would be more. And this is the reason there is a need for a different protocol which will suit these requirements and MQTT is one such protocol. MQTT works on a publish subscribe model, uh, which is more of an asynchronous way of data transfer, which means you need not have continuous or live connection between the publisher and the subscriber, which is client uh, and the other client for the data to be transferred. We'll see how. And due to this very asynchronous nature, the power consumption will be low. Uh, and this protocol is built uh, to transfer more of a binary format or lesser data transfers. Now let's see how MQTT works. MQTT works on pub sub model, publish subscribe model. And there are three important things that you need to notice in pub sub model. The first one is a broker. The second one is a topic. The third one is a client. A client could be a publisher or a subscriber, depending on the activity performed. In this example, a temperature sensor acts as a publisher. It basically senses the room temperature data and connects to the broker and publishes data, temperature data beyond 25 degrees to a topic called sensor one slash temperature. Now, the broker stores the information of the publisher and the topic details. Now, a subscriber can connect to the broker and subscribe to the same topic in order to receive the data the publisher has published. Now, broker will have the additional flexibility via certain parameters written in MQTT specifications to relay the information from the publisher to the subscriber. Now, let's try to understand the parameters uh, in the MQTT specification, which will also help us understand what is involved in testing MQTT based applications. Now, MQTT ORG is the home URL uh, for MQTT protocol. And then you can find the specification over there. There are different versions, the latest being MQTT 5 and 3.1.1 has lots of implementations. Go there, let's look at one parameter, which is called quality of service. Now QoS is a parameter. When it's set to zero, the message is delivered at most once. And when QoS is one, the message is delivered at least once and QoS is two, the message is delivered exactly once. We'll see what, what does it mean. Now, when a subscriber subscribes or connects to the 
Docker, it connects with a QAS parameter set. When QAS parameter is set to zero, the message will be delivered to the subscriber only when the connection with the broker is active. Whereas if the QAS is set to one, the message is supposed to be delivered even when the connection is active or inactive. Now, how does it happen when it's inactive? The message from the publisher on the same topic is stored within the broker. And when the subscriber reconnects, the message is delivered to the subscriber. Now, remember the initial requirement that we are talking about things working in unstable networks. Now, QAS1 will enable that. With QAS1, the subscriber can get disconnected and then still receive a message when it reconnects. Let's see this with an example. Now, what I'll do in this example test is to connect the subscriber and publisher to the broker, publish few messages and disconnect the subscriber and publish few messages, reconnect the subscriber and publish few messages. Now, when QAS is zero, the messages that are published when the subscriber got disconnected should not be received by the subscriber. Now, when QAS is one, the messages that are published while the subscriber got disconnected should be received by the subscriber. Let's see this. I've taken a sample uh, Python script to replicate what I've shown there. Initially, let's set the QS to zero for the subscriber. I've connected the subscriber and I've connected the publisher and I have the subscriber subscribed to the topic called topic one. And then the publisher published message one to topic one, which is message one. And then it published another message, message two. And I have disconnected the subscriber. Now published messages three and four after the subscriber got disconnected and reconnected the subscriber now and published message five after the subscriber got reconnected. Now, basically with QS zero, one, two, and five are what subscribers should receive. And with QS one, all one, two, three, four, five are what it should receive. Let's test this. Let me run this Python script. Now it says the subscriber connected with QS zero and uh, the subscriber subscribed to the topic and now publisher published a message one to the topic and then the message one is received, message two is received, message three and four are published but never received, message five is published and then it's received. This indicates that when the QoS is set to zero, the broker does not remember the subscriber details or the topics for which the subscriber is connected to. Now let's try and set the QoS to one. Then rerun the test. Four published. Yes, message three and four received now. And then message five published and received. So this is a simple test that you can do uh, for the QoS level. Now, you could say that the MQD specification is the same and what is there to test. Now, there are several implementations of MQTT which are written in different languages and MQTT specification being open source. There are different ways these uh, specifications are customized, transformed, and then, and then implemented as different brokers. I hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you all.